I think of you as a yeah. social commentator, and I want your social commentary on this. A seventh, okay. uh, two items. A seventh grader banned from school for wearing his Star Wars T-shirt. It shows a stormtrooper holding a gun. That's issue number one. Number two, uh, uh, MSNBC's uh, Melissa Harris Perry says Star Wars is a racist movie. Just roll this tape and watch this, Janine. <laughs> he was totally a black guy whose name basically was James Earl Jones. Who, right. and we were all, yeah. and, but it, while it, he was black, he was terrible and bad and awful and used to cut off white men's hands and didn't, you know, actually claim his son. But as soon as he claims his son and goes over to the good, he takes off his mask and he is white. Oh, yes, I have many, <laughs> many feelings about that. You want to deal with that, Turner? Um, this, uh, <laughs> I mean, Star Wars racist because James Earl Jones is the voice of one of the characters and he's black. I mean, I, I don't get it. Do you? No, and you know, political correctness is killing our country. And political correctness is going to be responsible for killing more Americans. I mean, this is just, this is just overboard completely. And regarding Darth Vader, please, I mean, look, the Bible talks about darkness and light. This is about evil and good, darkness and light. This doesn't have anything to do with anything else. This is, goes back to biblical times. It's been discussed in the Bible. Jesus talks about it. It's about darkness and light, evil and good. It has nothing to do. You know, evil people traditionally in the movies always wear dark and good people are in white. The evil people come up on the black horses. The good people come up on the white horses. I mean, you know, this is darkness and evil. This has nothing to do with it. I think but one... this kind of rhetoric, Varney, is what's <laughs> ruining our country and putting us in this clear and present danger, which, you know, I believe yeah, the I states agree. can take this back into their own hands, according to Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3 of the United States Constitution. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Turner, hold on a second. What, state that again. Which clause and which part of the Constitution? Okay, I stumbled across this when I was dealing with health care, but in the compact clause of the United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 3, Clause, Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3, it talks about that states cannot come together to do a compact without consent of the Congress. By the way, there's no consent of the president necessary. And yet, it says, there's this little thing that says they have to have consent of the Congress to come together unless we are, the states are invaded or there is imminent danger and then they don't have to get the consent of Congress. So oh. as far as I'm concerned, we are in imminent danger. Yeah. We are in clear and present danger. We're beyond imminent. So the states can legally, constitutionally come together to defend the, the American people, these 30 governors. They don't need to be bullied by the federal government. They can do this on their own without consent of Congress under Article 1, Section 10, Clause 3. Wouldn't it be nice if that was raised as an issue in this week's debate among Republican candidates? Because that's a very good point. Very interesting. Mm. Yeah. Well, Turner, you did it again. That was excellent. Thank you very much indeed. From Varney to Turner, all good stuff. Thanks very much.